All right, so like I said in my other video, I was curious to see what they were going to do because the pattern changed. Today is really the first day that it's changed. So, I, the, again, this is all my own personal speculation. I said in my last video, I think they may be setting up to allow this to bounce between 35 and 45, potentially back to 40 to 50, um, because they're running out of steam. Like, they, if they're doing what I think they're doing, and I think that they are really, they're returning shares in AMC right now, and then they're shorting, they're, they're taking that position and shorting it into the ETFs and splitting it into the ETFs. And I think it's sort of a last ditch effort to, you know, show that A, they're returning their shorts, they're, you know, and they can, you know, just give us some time, guys, give us some time. And they found a way to return them and still suppress the price so that that way it does not fucking fly up to a ridiculous level. And if no one's paying attention, <laughs> like, if no one's paying attention, to the ETFs, they're going to take this entire short position, which I believe is the entire float and then some that has been naked shorted, and they're going to return it into AMC and they're going to cut it into quarters or fifths and hide it in those ETFs. So, then that's where no one's looking, that's where no one's paying attention. And they can't really fuck with ETFs too much like that. I mean, even though some of these ETFs look like they were created for this specific purpose, it literally looks like that at this point. Um, but I think we're seeing a new level here. I knew they were not going to drop it below 30. I told you guys that everyone's saying, oh, I think we're going to go into the 20s, blah, blah. All these guys doing regular tech analysis. It doesn't matter in this play. This is brand new analysis. This is brand new. This is studying and in artificial intelligence's patterns in a manipulated short squeeze play. This is fucking brand new. What I am doing is literally pioneering a brand new freaking tech analysis of this. This has not been done before. This is <laughs> all purely speculation. But, I mean, for Christ's sake, what have I... Well, watch my videos. Like, what have I been telling you? I have been pretty much 100% accurate with what I come out mostly intraday, tell you guys what I'm seeing throughout the day. And when shit changes like it did today, what did I tell you before it hit 40? So we very well could see this. I was curious if they were going to let it go up to 40 and now we're going to start seeing a... A 35 to 45 $10 swing. See how much they're able to put back and then still short in that area of this squeeze plate. Now, if this thing goes crazy, which it may, they, they may end up getting fucked here. This was, this was risky, but at some point they had to do it. And I knew at some point they had to let it go over 40. They had to. There's no way that they wouldn't be able to. Just mathematically, they wouldn't be able to. And here we are looking at 43. If this thing blows up and after hours and pre-market tomorrow, they may have fucked themselves in, in a way they can't come back from. It is very possible. I have my own time frame of when I personally, myself, expected to see this thing blow up. And knowing what I know now, like seeing all the shit that's happened, uh, I, you know, doesn't mean that that's correct. Um, they very well could keep kicking this down the road. It all depends on these regulators and if we see immense buying pressure to overwhelm the system or if these banks step in and say, look, we're done playing this game, you're losing way too much money. There's just so many factors that we don't have and we can't get. Uh, <laughs> so it's all speculation at this point. Um, but I'm very curious to see if that's the new level here, if it's going to be, you know, between 30, maybe even 3750, they might have made 3750, that one area where the computer would not let it go over, that might be the new bottom. It might be a 3750 between 4750, possibly, or it could just end up being 40 between 50. I don't know. We're going to see, um, <clears throat> but this is different. This is completely different. Everything, even in AMC, even though it's happening through, the, uh, the ETFs, it's still, is what this is. Yeah. 
You don't bring it up, you're gonna. Yeah, this is all happening in the ETFs, all of it. Every bit of AMC's price action is pertaining to these ETFs. That's where everything's being done at by hedge funds, except I personally believe they are returning. They are returning shares in here. The real shares, because there's so many naked shorts, they're returning them there and then basically shifting them over into these different ETFs. Which means, you know, if no one's paying attention to these over here, they get to not only divide this up into at least four, but probably five or more. There's a lot of ETFs that house this shit, but at least four major ones. And they can cut their position into quarter chunks at a minimum and then return it at their leisure between here. And unless everyone were to basically rem just start pouring money into these ETFs and forcing them to go up, um, they're, they're going to save a lot of money in the long run. I mean, this is still going to have to, to run. It's still going to have to climb no matter what. But again, I think it, it, they are trying to regulate it and trying to minimize the amount of damage it's going to cause. Um, they are trying to get this into a normal short squeeze level. There are so many naked shorts out there that they're fucked, like 100% fucked. They have to come up with another way to get the real short interest level with real shares down on AMC. That, that's just, this is all my speculation. This is what I think they're doing. You know, and I call my shit intraday. I don't just fucking, I, I was wondering about it last week. I was like, I wonder if they will let it go into the 40s yet. No, not yet. They still had room to fuck with it. But even if they're shorting over here, they still have to return over here in AMC. So the price is still going to have to go up. And then they'll short, short, short over here. And I'm wondering if people are catching on. I wonder if some people, I mean, are starting to catch on to this. Starting to see that, you know, they're hiding this shit in ETFs. That's what they're doing. They're splitting it up. Which makes it cheaper in the long run. You know, now they have several different positions and different underlyings that they can, well, ETFs that they can return you know, in chunks, it basically it splits up their position is what they're doing. Instead of it being one gigantic short position in AMC itself, now they get to cut it into a position here, a position here, and a position here. So we'll see. Um, I, it's, I know it's not illegal because I saw a fucking... An SEC regulation I, I need to dig into where they were like approved a co-shorting deal in the ETFs. Like the SEC approved allowing hedge funds to literally co-short in ETFs, which is insane. I, it's not verified. I just saw it and it looked legit, but I still got to dig into it. I don't know. But either way, still be careful here because, again, they want you guys to be buying options. That's how they're making a shitload of money. They got your orders on lock. They are flowing them orders to dark pools. They want you, this is great for them. The run up here, it being over 40, you know, that's for your favorite YouTubers. I haven't watched any of them, none of them, but I guarantee you they're losing their nuts right now. I guarantee you they're fucking, oh, here it is, stop putting the cart before the horse. You guys watch this shit go down to 37.50, run up to 49, and then get fucking shoved down to 31.30. So, don't get too excited. Don't get overzealous. I think this, this, we very, very well could be seeing the next tier of this, you know, regulated event. Them trying to control this. <clears throat> and there's no guarantee that's going to last. Like I said, no, no one knows what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. All we can do is study this, watch it, look for changes in the pattern. That's it. It's all we can do. It's all we can bring in. And again, anyone that has an issue with my take on Trey and his tweet and you don't like what I said, I really don't give a fuck. Like, 
Don't even ask me if I care, because that's how much I do not care. Why would you show, just answer me this, children, why would you show your position from the day after the run-up instead of showing your positions today? Why wouldn't you just open your portfolio and just show your positions today and say, I didn't sell. No one said he sold at all. I believe he's got skin in the game. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Just nowhere near as much as he did. You know, there's a level of greed you have to be able to notice and cut its head off or you'll lose everything. You can tell me uh, he made over a million dollars and he wouldn't be happy taking, I don't know how much more over there, I just know that he made over a million dollars. And you can tell me he's not probably going to take that million, even though to a 25 year old a million dollars is a lot of money and it's really not, not this day and age a million dollars is not a lot of money and hopefully he's smart with it and invests it, you know, intelligently and you know, buys shit like land and stuff that the value of it increases, you know, makes smart investments <laughs> because a million dollars goes quick, like quicker than you'd think. Motherfuckers spend a million dollars in a month, literally in a month, so... We'll see. But either way, yeah, answer me that. Why wouldn't you show? The only reason these guys would not be showing their positions, and I need you to understand this, and I need you to hear me very clearly, because it, there is nothing illegal about it. They're, that's a fucking lie. They were showing you their positions all the way up until the big move. They had no problem showing them to you then. Weren't, weren't worried about the legalities of it then. You still have guys. Like Andrew shows you his positions wide open. You don't see him getting in any fucking trouble. You got other guys that show their positions all the time for free. And then a bunch of guys who do this for a living who charge you. But they'll show you their positions. They charge you to show you how to fucking trade and shit. The only reason you would not show your position in a situation like this is because you're afraid you're going to get sued. Because if you open your portfolio and nothing's fucking there... Or a very, very tiny percentage is there when you ran around telling over a million people, at least collectively over 500,000 between the majority of the channels, to buy and hold and buy some more. And that's what I'm doing. I'm buying. I'm holding. That's all we can do is buy and hold and buy and hold and all of that bullshit. And then the very first run up happens and you jump out, you are most definitely guilty of scamming those people. Whether you told them to buy or sell or not, the shittiest attorney in the world could walk into a courtroom and convince a judge and a jury that you intended to manipulate a group of uneducated people into investing into something that you had huge vested interest in. And then the moment it explodes, you get out. It's borderline fraud. <laughs> it could be misconstrued as fraud. And you most definitely could be sued. I am not an attorney. I could convince, 100% no, I could convince a judge and a jury that that's what you did. That is what you did. And even if you didn't lose the lawsuit, the fucking hundreds of thousands you would have to spend out of the money you took would be asked. It would just, it would, it would kill you. It would literally kill you. You would be tied up in so much litigation right now because not only would there be class action lawsuits, individuals could sue you separately. You would have to spend that million dollars you have on litigation alone for something of this magnitude. Even if you won, it would bleed you dry. That is the only reason why you would not show your positions today is because you pulled your shit. An attorney has already told you, look, man, <laughs> if anyone finds out that you did this and decides to sue you, they very, very, very well can do that. Very well can do that. If, if you had that much in it, if you took more than 50%. More than 50% of what you initially had invested, you are definitely guilty of fraud and pump and dump scheme, all that shit. If you took some, no big deal. And again, if they were transparent, if they were honest, well, nobody would have gave a fuck and it wouldn't have mattered. They're not hiding anything. Now it just looks like they're hiding it. 
like if that shit was going down or whatever and and I'm like, hey guys, um, I gotta like just what I said, I gotta take some of my profits here. I have to. You know, I'm gonna keep buying back in. I still 100 percent believe in this, but while this is up here, I gotta take some of my profits, see what happens, cause it's not gonna stay up here. My whatever. There was a hundred different ways they could have went about this to where they would have avoided any sort of litigation, any sort of possibility of getting in trouble. But the fact that most of you are sitting here believing that they are uh trying to uh avoid legal disputes over you know t feeling like they're telling you what to do or something being being con you know convicted of that of influencing you which they did they did 100 percent. they did whether they told you or not to buy is irrelevant it's irrelevant in a situation like this considering the fact that if they sold, which I myself personally believe that they did, based on everything, on all the evidence, on how these guys is, guys have carried themselves, their demeanor when they are on air, everything. I've seen it before. I have seen it before. And like I said, I can spot a liar before they even open their mouth. Like, that's how much I've been lied to in my life. That's how much I've been around negative bullshit and fucked up people. Like, I can just see your mannerisms. I can feel it in the air when you're getting ready to lie. <laughs> like, it changes the atmosphere when someone's about to be deceitful. And these guys, like I said, arguing crime, bitching about wanting transparency. And now they're like the most non-transparent fools in this community. Again, you believe what you want. This is America. I need you to understand that. This is America. You're entitled to your freedom of speech. You're entitled to believe whatever you want to believe. It doesn't fucking matter. I don't care if you think that Trey is the savior of this community and he didn't sell out and he's still fucking blah, blah, blah. Well, tell that to his brand new apartment in the most expensive area in his town. Tell it to his assistant that he now has. <laughs> his assistant... Tell it to all the new shirts that he fucking has. Tell it to the $500 a week he spends on food and haircuts, which totals up to about twenty four grand a year, which is not even most people's annual salaries. Tell it to the fact that a day, a day after it ran up, he had already had 200000 plus because there was other buys there. Like He already had, like what, 250000 or something like that to buy more when his original position was like a little over eighty grand or something before the run-up. I think that was the last thing he did. We saw he had like a little over $80,000 worth of stock, and he had very minute few shares or uh, option contracts. And again, the most lucrative option contracts were the expirations of June 18th, 20 and $40 strikes. Nobody sold those on the second and the third. Like nobody did. You don't do that. You don't. They're the most lucrative way that you can make money is with option contracts in the stock market. And you don't sell them when they're peaking up or anything like that. When you've got time, that's the very first rule of, of contracts. And when you see a return like that, and it was a ridiculous return, it was absolutely insane. I had a little under five hundred dollars worth of twenty and forty dollars strikes that I bought before the under fourteen fifty, and I saw my returns on that. <laughs> and you don't fuck with that when you still have like two weeks left, and this is possibly the start of a squeeze play. There's no way to know what's going to happen, where it's going to go. You, you have a percentage, a stop loss. You let that go down before you sell it. You do because you have plenty of time for it to boom back up, and make even more money than that nobody saw their options contracts and immediately sold them on the second like that was just depending on the ones you had i mean i'm not going to say no one did because if some people you know had five hundred thousand dollars to just throw into this fucking thing sure i, I guarantee you the millions they made off of options and shit yeah they they got rid of them but trey was not an options guy he very, very clear. That's not what he does. Options aren't his thing. He had a couple of them, but Trey is a shares guy. That's what he was. That's what he is. That was basically what his portfolio was. Coors, on the other hand, Coors was all options. His entire portfolio was 90% options. He was up over $500,000 in just options. And he didn't even sell. 
because he saw how much money was there to be made, how just the, the smallest amount of investment you could make, just fucking 50x itself, and this is possibly the beginning of what you've believed is going to happen all along, and he didn't sell, he ended up losing over half of that, because he, he kept like rolling and thinking this was still going to happen, and he was rolling out to later dates, that's what you do, that's what options players do, you don't get your option, it makes that much money, like, cool, I'm out, like I said, unless you had, like, a half a million or a quarter of a million that you were able to invest specifically for that, and then you made millions of dollars, and yeah, sure, you pull that, but all these guys wanted to be millionaires, that was their price target, that was Coors' price target, that was Trey's price target, all of them wanted to be millionaires, so that, that was their life-changing number, million dollars, Trey hit it, Coors didn't, Cord was a little over 500 grand and all options, and he didn't even sell any. I think he was under $250,000 by the time he finally stopped showing his positions because he finally sold them off. So, you believe what you want to believe. Like, I again, I don't give a shit. I know 100% that there's probably no one else in this community that has watched as much as I have watched from these guys that has vested my own energy and time into studying these guys' character traits, um, picking out their tells when they lie about something or they embellish something. Uh, nobody. And I, I have made many videos talking about how I like Trey. Uh, I, I'm not even mad if Trey took profits or anything, but this right here today, no. This is just like blatant lie after lie after lie. These guys all talk to each other all the time. They can't keep their stories straight. They all say different shit. And I'm whatever. Do you want to follow them? You still want to support them? Do your fucking thing. But Trey stopped calling this us and we a long time ago, and none of you paid attention. When he started coming back and streaming again, it was always you. You guys know what you need to do, and you guys have got to do, it used to be we. Like, we know why we're in this, we know what we're here for, we're going to blah, 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 blah. There ain't no we no more, because he's out. He's He made what he needed to make. Good for him, but now I just feel like he's lying to the community as a whole. He's not good at lying, he's very bad at it. He looks away a lot, he can't look at the camera, he swallow. he has every tell in the world of someone lying. And that's because, for the most part, he's an honest person. He's an honest person, he doesn't want to lie. And he's afraid of the community backlash he's going to get, because he's a sensitive guy, he is. He's a soft-hearted, sensitive person. And somebody came in, somebody, I promise you, somebody in a suit and a fucking tie, calling him son, came in and helped him make some good financial decisions for him. You know, looking him in the eye, telling him I'm here to help you all while he's reaching in his back pocket and taking his wallet. Happened to me. It, it happens. It's what, it's what these fuckers do. Happened to me. So, I just don't like the lies, guys. Just tired of the lies. Just wish these guys would be honest and be transparent. And I'm just telling you from someone who's old, older than most of the people in this community, who's been around, I've been around the legal system, I've been around the stock market, I've been around assholes, cheats, liars, everything. Everything in this world I've seen and experienced. I'm telling you right now, what I just saw on Trey, or review door screen with Trey's positions, that is a strategy. That is a strategy. You can read it in a couple books. Um, you can find videos about it. And it is literally a short squeeze exit strategy. It is for the initial run up. It's how to maximize your gains in a short squeeze scenario. And one of the things you do is you sell at the initial sign of a drop. This is like 3 to 4% drop is when you know that people are selling off. The dip is coming. You sell. You ride it all the way down. You pick a point between the low point and the high point in the middle is where you want to get back in when it's riding a straight up trend. Uh, you want to get back in within 2 to 3% of that middle point, which is exactly what he did around 57 and some change. And you put double 
your gains back in. You you know what you made off your initial investment. You made enough to pull. You made enough to put a lot away. And when you get back in, it's usually two to three times your initial investment, but at a minimum, two times your initial investment when you think it's going to go up again. And then they were convinced that it was going to squeeze again, but they were. They were hell-bent. This was going to blow up again before June was over. I made a video about that too, showing you right in July, right when it didn't happen, this shit just started tanking. And that's guys who were holding true in their beliefs that this was going to fucking explode and didn't and then started tanking. They got out, man. Like they, they got out. These guys have people advising them, financial experts handling their money. Like, literally, that's why you don't see them and their positions and shit anymore, because they're not fucking handling them. Someone else now handles that for them. Seriously, man, this shit is not that complicated. I, and I, I'm not even mad at the people that get upset about it, because I know you probably, you probably still live at home, or your parents are probably both still alive and happily married. Like, you don't know shit about the dark side of life and how rough and how bad and how ugly things can be. And you always want to believe in the good in people still because that's what you're taught at a young age. And unless you've witnessed the bullshit and disgustingness that people are capable of, you still always want to believe people are being honest, that they, they have your best interest in mind. And unfortunately, children... 99% of the people you come across in your life care about nobody but themselves, and that's just the God's honest truth. Even family, in many, many cases, will take advantage of you if the opportunity presents itself. People are selfish by nature. It has been that way since the beginning of time. Who's the biggest? Who's the strongest? They would take what they want. That is how that shit works and has always worked. People are selfish by nature. It is a trait you just are born with. You see it in kids. It's the one trait in kids that is inherent. They will take things, even when they can't speak, even when they can't communicate. They know that if they want it, they take it. That's it. It's inherent to be selfish. It's a trait that has to be unlearned. It's just the way it is. So take it how you want to take it. I'm going to keep trying to bring you guys more information now that we do have the break over 40 and what could potentially be a new pattern in my eyes. I'm going to be watching this very, very closely. Um, I'm hoping that I am 100% wrong. I am hoping to God that it's not going to bounce between like 37.50 and 47.50 or even 40 and 50. I'm hoping these guys are, you know, they're about to tap out. Like they're about to tap out. They've ran it through. They've been able to cover a lot. They've covered a lot. They've covered a nice chunk. Um, bouncing it between this 30 and 40. They've covered a nice chunk, even though they slid it over here to the ETFs, but no one's paying attention to this. So it's not like people are overwhelming these with buying pressure and that they're not going to be able to short, you know, and uh, buy back at a lower price. They'll make their money back here, at least a portion of it. They're minimizing their damage. That's They know they're fucked, so they're doing everything they can to minimize the losses. And... I'm, I'm hoping I'm just 100% wrong. I'm hoping the computer's getting turned the fuck off. It's done its job. And for God's sake, maybe they're going to let this thing just go. Just get it done. Get it over with. Let it go. It's my hope. It's my prayer. But judging by the new pattern in the ETFs here, I'm, I'm sure we're just... What I believe is that, you know, we're going to just start seeing a steady incline back toward the top of where they began running the price down in the ETFs and shit a few weeks ago. Um, it's just my belief. I do not take anything I say to heart. We could easily, easily wake up tomorrow, see that this is at like $45 in the pre-market, and then it fucking tank back down under 40 Like, you've seen it before. Understand that... <laughs> As it sits right now, there's no proof that we are back in any sort of control of this. None. This is still them, what appears to be them. So I'll make another video later when I look into it a little bit more. Um, again, remember, guys, 
This is America. I know that the younger generation, about 10 years younger than me, you guys think that you get, for some reason, you think you guys killed racism or are trying to kill racism. And A, you didn't fucking do shit. You don't know anything about racism. You never had to experience racism. The majority of you, a lot of them are, are black and white kids collectively together in like rich suburb neighborhoods sitting on the internet crying about shit you've never even had to go through witness your family didn't my generation squandered that the generation before me started etching it out you started seeing more interracial couples you started seeing more uh, blacks and whites being able to integrate in schools and be friends like my my entire childhood was filled with multicultural multiracial friends and we all made fun of each other. All of us made fun of each other. Our, everything about our races, all that. We laughed about it. We turned it into a joke, and that was how we killed it. And now, like, you little fuckers coming around, running your goddamn mouths about shit you know nothing about. You had nothing to do with any of the shit. And you just, like, you, you think that you're some sort of super savage warriors stepping into this world to right all these wrongs. That have already, for the most part, been taken care of. Like, literally been taken care of. All the attention that gets brought back into this shit, and when all these ignorant people want to step in to save someone that, A, they don't know, they don't know anything about the scenario, and they're not even educated at all on, on what they're attempting to say. <laughs> you guys have to understand that the shit you're running around crying about and trying to save, for some reason, it's it's for you. You're doing it for you to, like, make yourself feel better for some reason about something. I don't know what it is. I don't know why you do it. But when people present you with facts, or even if it's circumstantial evidence, but still evidence that has a theory behind it or a hypothesis that is fairly sound, and you don't even listen to it, all you're doing is hurting yourself, and you're making yourself more ignorant than you already are. Like, again, the, the fact that all these kids out here, you think that you know some shit that people 10, 15 years your senior don't know. And I got news for you. We had the internet well before you were even born. Like, we pioneered this shit. We know more about it than you do. We know how to actually access accurate information <laughs> instead of just looking on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Like, see what I'm saying here? You guys get all your information from videos and you think it's a fact. It's just not the way it is, guys. It's not the way it is. Not at all. <clears throat> and either way, that's going to be the only political aspect I ever talk about. I just want to let you know before any of you start in on any of your crusading topics and trying to defend my evidence and my opinion and my freedom of speech that I have a right to, I'm just giving you a heads up. I will fuck you up in the comments. I will make the, I just don't. If you don't believe what I'm saying, cool. Then we agree to disagree because it's America and we're allowed to do that. But if you try to go on some sort of crusade, I promise you I am a beast. Like, I am a beast, I will embarrass the fuck out of you, and I will post it everywhere to make an example of you, because I'm sick and tired of these little crusaders that just like someone because I, I like them. Yeah, I did too. I did too. I've had many, many personal friends over the years that I've had to kick out of my life, and I used to love them, but then turns out they lie, or they steal, or they just overall end up being pieces of shit the older they grow. Shit happens. People change. Money changes people. So, if you don't like what's being said, don't fucking watch. I, I'm not asking for your sub. I'm not asking for your like. Nothing. I don't care. All I care about is that the uneducated people, the people that don't know anything about the stock market, the younger people that don't know anything about how to read a human being, apparently, and do real behavioral analysis, not, not that bam dude shit, but real actual behavior analysis. I want to make sure you guys learn. Learn about people, learn about money, learn about how it affects people, learn about how it could potentially affect you. I want you to learn more about the stock market. I want you guys to educate yourselves. Charlie's over here doing like little tests and shit that I absolutely love. He is 
doing these little survey tests about a lot of the information he's brought to you guys and a lot about the regulatory systems, filing systems, all kinds of shit. It's full of goodies. I suggest you check it out. Um, it's just that's what uh, both of us at the end of the day are trying to do. Educate you guys. Educate you all. There is nothing more powerful than strong education, being educated on topic. And if it's something that involves your time and money, you should be wanting to learn as much as you possibly can. So, sorry, this video is longer than normal. I'm trying to trying to get them down, but I just get, get so much to say to you guys. I, I should have made a channel forever ago, but I was just, fuck. You know, it, it's going to be what it's going to be. Not a big deal. So, but from there, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what happens with this new pattern. Like I said, I saw it. I saw it. Go, go check my video. I saw the break, and I told you something. Something here's different. And I'm wondering if they're gonna let us go over 40, and boom, here we are. So I may be on to something. You all like legitimate. I might be developing a legitimate system. Like this is gonna go into my program that I'm gonna develop. 100% gonna go into it on how to read artificial intelligence programs in a short squeeze scenario. Because I think I'm getting really, really good at this shit, honestly. Alright, guys. Again, just play this shit in the background while you're doing homework or something since it's a half hour long. Give you give you something to do while you clean your room or make dinner. I don't know. Alright, you guys, I'm out.